Wait, what's that sound? Oh, it's the Galaxy Z Flip 5 doing a mess in its pants because there's a new kid in town, the Techno Phantom V Flip. The Phantom V Flip, as the name kind of suggests, is another flippy foldable phone boasting some respectable specs. But is it a true Samsung rival? I'm going to whip it on out of the box right now, slap my SIM in there, and then through the magical powers of video editing, we'll zip forward in time to deliver my full in-depth Phantom V Flip review. And for more of the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Jars. So what is Techno stuck in this box? Well, first up, you got the phone, which comes with several stern warnings. Oh, even more around back. And I do like how the texture of these random box bits matches the rough texture on the back end of the Phantom V Flip as well. I don't geek out over boxes very often, but that's lovely attention to detail. So you've also got yourself a Pokey Pin device, a USB-C cable, a 45 watt power adapter with amusing pop-up action, and you've also got yourself a very funky protective keychain case. And in case you were wondering, this is what the Techno Phantom V Flip looks like with that case slapped on there. Actually wraps all the way around the Techno V Flip 5 to protect the front as well as the back. And last up, you've got yourself some very random stickers. I'm assuming this is some sort of TikTok dance thing that the kids are doing. The big old fish on their head. And that right there is everything you get bundled in the box with the Phantom V Flip. So, time to shove my SIM in there. Ooh, all right, we're back. I'm two weeks older, two weeks wiser. A few more crags under the old eyes. And that entire time I've had my SIM card slapped in the Techno Phantom V Flip. And first up, just like other dinky bendy blowers such as the Oppo Find N2 Flip and Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 5, I flippin' love the compact design of the Phantom V Flip. This teeny blighter is just 15 mm thick when it's folded up and it's so wee that it'll fit basically anywhere, even inside a shirt pocket or a tiny purse or the cat. Here's the Techno side by side with Oppo's flippable wonder and as you can see very similar dimensions bugger all gap in that fold once again. And the Phantom is still surprisingly weighty, it's just a butterfly's bollock under 200 grams, but so far it appears to be a pretty hardy morpho. Despite being banged about the place for the best part of a fortnight now, there's next to no signs of wear and tear on that dinky frame. Just a few tiny teeny wee scratches on that shiny metal edge and that's pretty much it. That leather style surface is in perfect nick and the soft touch finish not only feels great but it also helps to set the Phantom V Flip apart from most other foldable rivals. This pattern design stretches across the front and the back ends broken up with the glossy metal and a sandblasted hinge cover. And thankfully those metal bits aren't a massive fingerprint magnet like they are on that Galaxy Z Flip 5 so you won't find yourself constantly rubbing this thing on your chest. Unless you want to of course. Rawr. Although that front screen does get a bit mucky and smudgy, so it will definitely need the occasional buffing to avoid looking skanky. And i got to say, I rather like this light violet colour option as well. Not really sure what it's called though, it's referred to as Mystic Dawn in Techno's Reviewer's Guide, but according to the box, it's Periwinkle Purple, which I think I personally prefer, because it has the word winkle in it. <coughs> oh, and the Phantom V Flip is also available in black if you're a bit of a boring bugger. And while there's seemingly no official IP rating for water and dust resistance, at least it doesn't explode in the rain. But if water resistance is a key feature for you, well, definitely check out that Z Flip 5. Now, while mini rivals such as the Motorola Razr and that Z Flip 5 have boosted the size of the front display, Techno has gone old school by slapping a dinky 1.32 inch panel on the face of the Phantom V Flip. This certainly stands out from the crowd with its circular design. It's roughly the same size and shape as most smartwatch displays. And I do love the way that front screen looks, but naturally this design choice does kind of kick functionality right in the cock. It's an AMOLED screen, so you can expect deep dark blacks and eye-catching colours, while the 466 by 466 pixel resolution means that images and tiny text are nice and sharp. That refresh rate does max out at 60 hertz, however, just like on Samsung's flippy phones, so not the smoothest when you are flipping through the various menus, but that slow refresh is much more noticeable on a big sized panel. Doesn't matter quite so much on a dinky little thing like this. Now swipe down from that main clock face and you'll call up the control center, which is admittedly rather bare bones, but it does include the major toggles, bit of do not disturb, airplane mode, etc. If you swipe up, instead you'll get a full list of all of your fresh notifications. So with messaging apps like WhatsApp for instance, you can read a message and then you can shoot back a quick preset reply. 
or just respond with a simple emoji and that's basically it. And at the moment you don't seem able to actually edit those presets either but hopefully that's something that will come in an update. Swipe right and you'll come across the media controls. This can be used to play or pause your media, you can also skip tracks. And if you flick left, you'll nip through whichever widgets you happen to have enabled. These include pretty much everything that you would expect. You've got health stats, alarms, timers, weather reports, a camera widget. And this right here is a full list of all of the widgets you can have in there. And you can quickly swap some in, take some out. It's quite a limited selection right now. No map support, which was certainly a miss. Because it's so dinky, you can't open any of your apps on there, unlike on the Motorola, the Samsung. Although on that Galaxy Z Flip, it does take some jiggery pokey to get any of your apps working on there. And because of that, and the fact that the notification support is pretty bare bones, I did find that most of the time when I was using the Phantom V Flip, I was prizing it open. Right, basically for everything apart from setting a quick timer or snapping a selfie or seeing how many steps I haven't bothered to walk so far. But at least you can customise the vibe of that cover screen with various themes or stick your own wallpaper on there if you want. And there's also an obligatory virtual pet feature so you can neglect a sickly sweet fluffy cartoon thing and let it wallow in its own virtual feces to make yourself feel better. Now sadly there isn't a proper always on display for that front screen so every time you want to check the time or see if you've got any notifications you will have to give it a double tap or give the Techno Phantom V Flip a bit of a shake. Oh, just there's the, uh, the moggy there. Take that you fluffy twat. There is an always on display option for the main screen inside but then that kind of makes a mockery of having a front screen at all but again hopefully that'll be sorted in an update. As for that drop shaped hinge here on the Techno Phantom V Flip, well I personally found it was just the right level of stiff. You, were. you can just about unfurl this phone with one hand without making it look like you're having a stroke. But at the same time that hinge is also rigid enough so the Phantom V Flip folds open at a range of roughly 30 to 150 degrees, similar to the Galaxy Z Flip 5. And that's really handy when you need to prop it up into video chat or just watch a bit of YouTube, whatever else. And that 6.9 inch internal screen is a bit of a cracker with some surprisingly subtle crease action that is only noticeable when you tilt the Phantom V Flip away from your face. This AMOLED display is proper punchy with crispy contrast. Those Full HD Plus visuals are rather bloody lovely. And that stretched aspect ratio is very well suited to cinematic viewing as well as split screening. Aye, there is a shiny glossy screen protector slapped over the surface as usual, but this panel hits a thousand nits, so I found that the Phantom was easy enough to use outdoors despite those reflections, even when I was wearing shades. You get a wee bit of colour distortion, but nothing too troublesome. And that refresh rate ranges all the way from 10 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz so it's great for preserving power as well as making everything look creamy smooth. However those stereo speakers aren't fantastic and they're absolutely fine for just kicking back with some YouTube or whatever but the music sounds pretty ruddy awful on them. You'll definitely want to get some headphones or a Bluetooth speaker hooked up to these things unless you fancy a bit of full on ear assault. And as for the software stashed on the Techno Phantom V Flip, well it's Android 13 naturally with a bit of the very friendly sound and high OS slapped on top of that. And this changes up a fair few aspects of that Android UI, so for instance it's completely scrapped Google's Discover feed and replaced it with Techno's own take, complete with various headlines etc. And you've also got yourself a control centre here full of all that toggly goodness. It's essentially the standard techno experience except for a few wee tweaks to suit the bendy nature of this blower. So for instance if you're streaming a YouTube video and you bend the phone like so, the screen will split, you've got your video playing in the top half here and then the bottom half becomes media controls. Very handy for quickly pausing, resuming and skipping through that timeline. You can also quickly and easily minimise an app by swiping three fingers up like so, it then becomes a dinky floating window which can be moved about the place and also resized quite easily. And you can quickly and easily split screen with two apps as well. Not all apps are compatible as you can see there, the grayed out ones are not too happy about that. But the majority work absolutely fine in split screen mode so then you can continue watching a YouTube video up at the very top half of the screen while you're browsing a bit of social media, replying to emails, whatever you need to do. And yeah, I have experienced the odd software bug with the Techno Phantom V Flip in the last couple of weeks. Not a shock at all because this is pre-launch software, so hopefully any bugs will be sorted out before the actual official retail release. 
And then we just minor things like, for instance, occasionally an email notification would pop up and I would try to delete it by tapping delete and it just wouldn't be having any of it. And also occasionally controlling any media using the little media player that pops up in that notification panel also was not too happy. And the Techno Phantom V Flip features the fresh new Ella voice assistant who's actually connected to ChatGPT apparently. You can conjure her up with a tap of the app, otherwise you can do the usual holding down of the power button or just use your voice to get it to pop up as well. And with a lot of these third party voice assistants, frankly, you might as well be directing your queries at a lump of solidified dog excrement. And Della can certainly be a bit of a mixed bag, but overall, not bad at all. Show me the fastest way to get to London Bridge. And success, Ella has loaded up a bit of Google Maps and shown you all the various options. But her app access is limited, so for instance, show me horror movies on Netflix. And what you get instead is a bit of a YouTube search. When is Sunderland Football Club's next match? I apologize for the confusion. I don't have access to real-time information. And that is the stock response to quite a lot of queries, although she does have access to some real-time information. You can ask her what the weather's like in basically any friggin' city on the globe. And last and most importantly, of course, can she tell a good joke? How did Benjamin Franklin feel holding his kite when he discovered electricity? Shocked. That was awful. I apologize if the joke wasn't to your liking. Let me try it. No, 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 I no! On the security side, whether well, you've got an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor just built into that power button, which works an absolute treat. Had absolutely bugger all issues with that the past couple of weeks. And you do have face unlock as an alternative option as well, which again, works fine, nice and nippy, as long as you're not wearing shades. And you've also got a generous 256 gigs of storage, although a chunk of this is filled up with crapware, some of which can't be easily removed. Now, performance is provided by a MediaTek Dimensity 8050 chipset backed by 8 gigs of RAM here in my review model. And that Mali G77 GPU can handle creative stuff and gaming, no worries. Genshin Impact runs without a struggle, even when you kick the graphics up to maximum settings. However, while you've got a proper vapor chamber cooling system packed into this thing, I did find that the Phantom V Flip does get a bit toasty up at the top end after you've been gaming for around half an hour or so, at which point the gameplay does get a bit jittery. But again, this is only if you're really passionate with a demanding title like Genshin on those higher graphic settings. And HiOS does serve up a comprehensive gaming mode packed to the tits with all kinds of great features. You've got the usual performance and battery saver modes. You can block notifications, tweak all kinds of different settings. And stuffed inside of the Techno Phantom V Fold is a 4000 mAh capacity cell. Reasonably sizable for a compact bendy blower like this. It's bigger than what you'll find inside of the Motorola Razr 40 Ultra and the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, although not quite as large as the Oppo's in the Find and 2 Flip. Now, I felt I generally made it through a full day on a single charge of the Phantom V Flip, as long as I didn't go too mental doing, you know, lots of video chatting or anything like that, but, you know, a good bit of media streaming, plenty of podcast action, and a reasonable bit of camera play as well. There were only a couple of occasions in the past fortnight where I did have to plug it in for around 10 minutes or so, just to give it that little bit of extra juice, Otherwise, it probably would have run out before I finally gave up on life and face-planted my pillow. And thankfully, the Techno Phantom V Flip does recharge reasonably nippy. You've got 45 watt charging support there, so it takes roughly 45-50 minutes to get a full charge. However, no wireless charging support. So let's bring this lovely Techno Phantom V Flip review to a close with a squint at the dual lens camera tech, which is built into the bezel surrounding that front display. And this comprises a 64 meg primary camera plus a separate 13 meg ultra wide angle shooter. And that camera app is rather thick with features, including the cover screen preview. This just allows your subject to check their hair and perfect their pout on that cover screen before you hit the shutter button. You've got plenty of filters to play around with and the obligatory beauty mode if you want to slim somebody's head down a bit, give them a, a bit of junk in the trunk. And in the auto mode, this bendy wonder snaps 16 meg photos using 4 in 1 pixel binning, and that focus reacted pretty well to pretty much everything I threw at it. Even extreme close ups generally come out quite well. And if you've got that AI mode switched on, then you can certainly expect bright boosted colours that really pop. Just like you got on those older Samsung phones before they calmed it down a wee bit. Vibrant subjects are certainly eye pleasing, but you'll want to knock that mode off if you want a more realistic picture. The Phantom V Flip doesn't cack itself with troublesome contrast either. 
Even when you're shooting against a bright blue sky, it is rare to see any proper saturation of the image. Those indoor shots can look a bit soft and blurring is almost guaranteed if your subject won't stand still. That's not really a surprise. At least the Phantom V Flip can brighten up darker scenes even without swapping to that night mode. And in proper serious low light, the Techno Phantom V Flip performs about as well as most other compact foldables. The other camera modes do a respectable job too, you got the standard stuff like a decent and dependable portrait mode. And there's a fun blue sky mode that can brighten up snaps taken, well basically in the UK. And yes there is a pro mode as well but this doesn't offer raw image capture. For a different viewpoint, the Phantom V Flip's ultra wide angle shooter is pretty straightforward. You will need decent lighting to get a usable shot and colour capture isn't as poppy but at least it's there if you need it. And of course you don't get a telephoto shooter on here just as you don't with most compact foldables but there is a 64 megapixel high resolution mode which can be toggled on like so. And this produces slightly sharper pics with finer detail so they don't look quite as fuzzy when you crop in. Although the lack of pixel binning means colours aren't as cleanly captured and contrast is more of an issue. Switch to video mode and you can record your very own 4K resolution footage, although the image stabilisation at Ultra HD level ain't too hot, so you'll want to stay reasonably still to avoid any serious shaky cam action. But picture quality is decent enough, as is the audio pickup, which is nice and clear even at a distance. No one, I've got bugger all idea what's going on here, but at this point in the evening I'd had all of the tequila and I was well into it. Now here on the inside of the Techno Phantom V Flip, you've got yourself a 32 meg selfie camera with eye autofocus and that can record up to 2K resolution video. But of course, there's no need to use this for your selfies or anything. It's more useful for video chats, you're doing a bit of Skyping or Zooming or something like that. Because if you want to take a selfie, you can of course just use that 64 meg rear camera. You've got a couple of different options here. You can either just hold it like so and tap this on-screen shutter button, which is nice and comfortable. Or else you can sit the Techno Phantom V Flip on any surface, get it to whichever angle you need, and then simply raise your hand to get it to take a shot. Unfortunately, you don't get any kind of countdown on the cover screen when you're doing the old hand gesture, but hopefully again, that's something that will be fixed in an update. And you can double tap to change the perspective at any point. You can also swipe in order to access the video mode. Nice bit of vertical action on the go away. Or that portrait mode. And there you have it my lovelies, that is my review of the Techno Phantom V Flip and I've got to say I've very much enjoyed my time with this bendy blower in the past couple of weeks even though the software clearly not quite 100% there needs a little bit of love. That's to be expected from a pre-launch device. The battery life has been fantastic design, I really really like the performance decent as well as long as you're not playing Genshin for a good couple of hours at a time. But of course, if you want a bendy foldable where you can actually do a lot more stuff on that cover screen, you know, running apps and such forth, well, you'll definitely be more swayed by the likes of a Galaxy Z Flip 5, etc. But you know, does Samsung's blower allow you to shake a cute cartoon kitty until he's absolutely stunned? No, I don't think so. So that's what I reckon anyway of the Techno Phantom V Flip. It'd be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.